Hello, everybody, and welcome to Whiteboard Wednesdays with Vanna. And we have another great episode for you today. We're going to be discussing a little bit more about the NVIDIA product line, and we're just going to kind of map out the differences between the DGX, HGX, EGX, and AGX. So when you basically rock up to their website, you might be overwhelmed by the information that you see there. I certainly was with the first time I started looking at this, and it took me quite a while to kind of patch in you know, how NVIDIA's product line actually works. So let's start with the flagship that NVIDIA has. And the flagship that they've got is referred to as the DGX. So the DGX at this very point in time is the primary building block for many of the supercomputers that are around the world today. And the Ampere architecture is prefixed with the A100. So the A100 GPU is what will be in the actual DGX A100. Now with the release of the Hopper architecture, which is now designated the H100 GPU card, when we speak about the DGX H100, this is the brand new flagship box, that HU monster, that is basically five times faster than the previous generation Ampere uh, DGX. So the DGX is built by NVIDIA. It is their product branded with them. It's their architecture and the componentry and everything that you find within it is effectively the gold standard of NVIDIA's GPU range supercomputer building blocks. This is also the base for the super pod, the base pod, and also the, the, the building of any of those GPU accelerated high-end compute. There is literally nothing bigger or more substantial that you can buy in terms of GPU accelerated consumer sized boxes today that will fit into a data center. So the DGX, let's just summarize, flagship, it is the standard and it is really the, the, the primary building block for all of the supercomputers that you have today. Then when you look onto their website, you'll find the second one, which is called the HGX. Now, the HGX is actually not manufactured as a solution with the with the uh, with the nvidia what they do is they create a certification template that allows oems or other server builders such as supermicro uh, dell uh, hp uh, and lenovo and the likes of that to to go and basically build a similar or same kind of footprint as the dgx using the a100 or the h100 or in addition to that, maybe some of the other cards like the A30, right? So we can do the A100s, the H100s, right? The A30s, uh, the A40, and also the A16, A10, and the A2, right? Basically all of the range of analytical GPUs that NVIDIA has, we can build into an HGX. And that's really the big difference between the two solutions. The DGX is only the top end. That is the ba big baby. There is nothing bigger than that. Whereas the HGX gives us a little bit more flexibility. You can use your preferred vendor. And they also have a one-to-one -one equivalent of the DGX, but it's built on their, on their platforms coming out of their factories. So with this, instead of having to go for a large 6U box, you can kind of start with something smaller, something that maybe has a different power profile, and something that maybe fits your intermediate workloads you might not need the, the behemoth power of the DGX itself. So this really gives you know, NVIDIA that flexibility into the market and it gives you as the customer, the consumer of this product, uh, a very, very nice way of stepping into that AI enterprise market that, you, that you're working with. Now, something that's just been released now at the last GTC is a very new GX, which is called the OGX. And this is all to do with the Omniverse, right? So you may have heard of the Omniverse, which is basically their metaverse. It is a virtual environment where collaborators, uh, 3D designers and developers can come together and effectively create and, and, and uh, build digital environments in a virtual world. Now, specifically for the Omniverse, uh, NVIDIA has actually built a solution. So very similar to the DGX uh, built in their factories, but it uses the L40 or the Lovelace architecture 
uh, GPU, which is really, really, uh, you know, optimized for rendering, for 3D graphics, for uh, virtual reality and augmented reality type of workloads. So in a very similar vein where they kind of build the gold standard for analytics, when it comes to the OGX, you can basically buy this from NVIDIA and it is set up specifically to drive your Omniverse environment and get everybody to collaborate. Now, you can also get the OGX, not just in the NVIDIA build, but also in the same format through Supermicro, Dell, HP, or Lenovo. They've also been certified to build their version of the OGX. So it gives us huge flexibility into the market. Hopefully it explains the differences between these so that when you kind of look at their product map, you can actually kind of, you know, put together where they all fit in and what works where. Now, there's two additional ones that kind of play more into the edge and into the IoT space, and that is the AGX, right? Now, the AGX is is basically the, the Jetson uh, Nano or the Jetson suite of products. Now, the new version of this is the Orin, right? And what you have here is a, a pocket sized, kind of like a, a, a Raspberry Pi or a Druno kind of board size, but with a very, very powerful GPU built on it. And this is really the actual end IoT platform that you would put close to the sensors where the data is generated and move those uh, inference uh, models onto the actual unit itself, where you'd be able to do the decision making on there. Then, after all of these, we have the last one, which you might see, and that I kind of refer to as a composite solution. It's, the, it's called the EGX. So the EGX is really for edge uh, computing, right? So it actually incorporates a, a mix of HGX kind of builds that's maybe watered down or specific for edge configurations and using the actual cards depending on the type of workload that we might be putting into an edge gateway. Now, you might know that an edge gateway is something where we build a, a EGX, right, where we're doing inference and we're bringing maybe a whole bunch of streams together. Or it might also include an AGX, like a, like a Jetson, right, unit, which we might have multiples of these, right, going out, connecting to a camera, right, uh, or connecting to some kind of sensor, and that's feeding the telemetry data. So it really just depends on the how the solution or what the requirements are, how we would build this. But then instead of having all of the sensors out there, we can kind of bring those together to AGXs and then stream them up to a to a gateway, or we might even send them, you know, into a, a DGX uh, slash HGX a uh, large analytical on-prem, you know, solution that's sitting in some data center. This might be in some little regional uh, office. This is in a DC typically, and this is typically, could be anywhere. It could be embedded into a factory. It could be stuck out in the felt somewhere. You know, this is where you, you, you're you kind of doing a lot more remote. Or it could even all the way encompass having services in AWS slash, um, you know, one of the cloud providers itself. So the EGX is an edge solution but in my mind, it's a composite potentially of all of these components that could make up uh, 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 inference and training pipeline for your for your data. So hopefully this has given you a view on NVIDIA's product line, uh, a bit of a better explanation of the, the different GXs and, uh, and what they all mean. We haven't gone into much detail, but hopefully there's some clarity around these and it'll help you in your decision making when you're looking for the right NVIDIA solution. Thank you very much for joining us on another episode of Whiteboard Wednesdays with Van. Please don't forget to like, share and follow our LinkedIn page.